Your hands, O Lord, have made us and fashioned us. Give us understanding that we may learn your will. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. My first introduction to Zacchaeus was through the Sunday school song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. Maybe some of you are familiar. I also remember illustrated Bibles depicting Zacchaeus up in the tree with a smiling Jesus calling him down to the ground. These images instilled in my brain a happy Zacchaeus, excited to see Jesus and honored to host Jesus in his home. I thought, how lucky must Zacchaeus feel that he gets to spend one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus? In reflecting on the text this week, I've discovered that this childlike insight gives way to a deeper understanding when we begin to examine why Zacchaeus climbed that tree, why Jesus called him down, and why this is such a happy interaction. For the past several weeks, we have heard the accounts of Jesus healing the blind and sick, bringing good news to the poor, and uplifting those who are oppressed. So this account might seem a little surprising here, because Jesus is seemingly taking the side of a rich man, a tax collector. However, I think this is still a fitting example of the way that Jesus works. Zacchaeus is unpopular. He is rich in a town where the majority are poor. He has status when the general populace does not. The crowd of people who have come to see Jesus are confused and grumble and protest because this is not the Jesus they know. Surely, the Jesus who heals, communes, and resides with those on the margins would side with the crowd. But as we know, Jesus always flips the script. In this encounter, Jesus still identifies the one who is lost, the one who is excluded, the one who needs healing. Jesus identifies Zacchaeus because there are many ways to be lost. We can be lost in the bureaucracies that dictate our lives. We can be lost in societal pressures. We can be lost in the material world. We can be lost in economic gain. This is the kind of lost that is happening to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus differs from other people of high status in the Gospels, however. He is not oblivious to the fact that he is disliked and that he could do better. He feels the pain of exclusion. He wants the feeling of acceptance and community. So when Jesus comes to town, Zacchaeus is seeking. He is trying to physically see Jesus and wants to see so badly that he gives up his dignity and climbs the tree. Little does he know that at the same time, Jesus is also seeking. Jesus is looking for Zacchaeus. Even though they have not met before, Jesus knows Zacchaeus by name and has identified him as needing healing. In what must have been a startling moment for Zacchaeus, Jesus calls him down from the tree and asks Zacchaeus to host Jesus at his house. Why then did Jesus call Zacchaeus down from that tree? To initiate a relationship, to heal a relationship. Jesus sits and communes with Zacchaeus and his family. Zacchaeus, in turn, promises to give his good fortune to the poor. 
Jesus proclaimed salvation upon not only Zacchaeus, but his entire household, and declares Zacchaeus a son of Abraham, a child of God. Jesus is not only proclaiming Zacchaeus healed of his sins, but Jesus is also promising a healed relationship between Zacchaeus and the community that despises him. In promising that he will give to the poor, Zacchaeus is showing his dedication to mending this relationship. Zacchaeus no longer feels lost and excluded, unable to navigate this situation by himself. He has received Jesus' healing and knows he is loved by God. So what does this mean for us? this happy interaction, this healing relationship, this promise of salvation. First, it means that when we are lost in the burdens, constructs, and materiality of this world, when we are climbing up a tree to get a glimpse at the one who heals, Jesus is already actively seeking and searching for each one of us, and knows us intimately by name. It means that when we are healed, we will be asked to commit to this healing and answer a call. Because of Zacchaeus, we can remember that when we are called by God to do something, it is not a call from the distance, but one that is deeply rooted and personal. It is a call that can only come from deep knowing, love, and care. Just like Jesus standing at the bottom of the tree, God identifies us and calls us by our names, saying, Come down and be healed. Second, it means the promise of salvation, not only individually, but across our communities our nation, and our world. We are not alone. It means salvation of all in relationship to one another, human, non-human, and divine. It is the proclamation and promise of a world to come in which everyone and everything lives together in peace. It is the promise of resurrection in the world today. Jesus did not just say that Zacchaeus was granted salvation, but that his whole household was granted salvation. Zacchaeus will not be alone in navigating God's call to him on earth or in his promised everlasting life in heaven. He will be in relationship with his family, his community, and God. We also have been given these support systems to help us navigate God's call. We have been given families, friends, neighbors, co-workers, church communities, and so many more relationships that are necessary to navigating our own callings and our own promise of salvation. When we come down from the tree we find that the healing and maintenance of these relationships are the pathways that lead us out of our lost state. These promises are what make this interaction so happy. In remembering the illustrations of my childhood, I think it is still appropriate that Zacchaeus and Jesus are beaming from ear to ear, I pray that each of us will encounter our own happy interaction, our own calling, and our own healing. I pray also that we realize the interconnected nature of our relationships with one another and work to support each other, healing any brokenness with the love of Christ. I pray that we climb down from the tree and are found by the one who knows us by name. Amen. <laughs>